Um, by special request, we're going to have a look at the Gardner uh, water pump, the circulating pump. Uh, somebody in the comments section uh, made a special request that we would have a look at this. So, typically, Gardner is very, very simple. We've got a rotating uh, impeller which rotates in here, and simply by virtue of the centrifugal force, it forces the water out through this channel here and off through the engine. So, that goes off there like that. The input water comes in here at the bottom, out here, and up through the block and up through the head and back out again. We, we had a look at the water rails in a previous um, uh, in a previous video. Now, how it gets its drive is from this drive shaft here, which plugs in across there like that and ro locates in a gear on the end of the camshaft. The camshaft is coming down here and there's a special gear on the end of it which locates in that helical gear there and rotates that shaft. Gives gives no bother at all. You have two bearings, you have a bearing here and a bearing there. They give no, no bother at all. Now, <coughs> the spindle locates in on that square there and that's it. So that's how it works. Now, uh, you'll notice that the spindle <coughs> has a reduction on it here, which is very clever. <coughs> the idea being that if the impeller should ever jam or there was some, some problem with the pump, the pump should jam up, that will simply shear there rather than <coughs> passing that horrible destructive torque back in onto the camshaft mechanism. It just breaks there. Okay, the pump stops working, but it's a lot less expensive to replace the spindle than it is replacing the whole, uh, the whole gear on the, on, the, on the camshaft. It would mean dismantling the whole front of the engine. So that's quite a quite a, a, a clever idea. That uh, again, <coughs> the seal. You'll see the seal comes in two parts. We have a very finely machined surface here, and we have another very special nylon type surface here. And the shaft goes in there like that. And the two surfaces. I can't get that one to go in there for some reason at the minute. But those two surfaces match up, and that forms a perfect seal, and it does not leak. Um, even if it does leak a bit, what will happen is the water will simply drip out here. It won't go into the engine. There's a little, a little rubber uh, wheel which fits in here, and any leaks there are, are just, are, they just drip out, and, and they won't do any harm. And you'll see them, so you can take action then. So again, it's all, it's all very simple. This is a complete pump here, ready to be fitted. Again, up is on there like that. Water comes in here, out here around the block and up, and this is a bypass circuit here. I think we explained that more fully in another video. So that's it. Again, very, very simple. Very simple technology. Goes for years without giving any bother. So, I hope that's clear. I just wanted to very briefly discuss with you um, how these heads are torqued up. Uh, <clears throat> we've already looked in a, in, a, in a previous video at this particular engine here and uh, we've seen how the block underneath the head here had grooves in it or channels in it which allowed uh, coolant to escape if the uh, cylinder head gasket uh, was blown. But whenever we put on the heads anew here we have to torque up all these nuts here in a particular sequence and to a particular torque. Generally speaking, we work our way out. We start in the center of the head and we tighten all the nuts on, a, on, a, on an outward sweep. It's like a, as if you, would, uh, you were fold, folding out, a, smoothing out a sheet on a bed. You would start in the center and you would push the, the, the ripples out towards the outside. Now, um, we can get onto these nuts here no problem using a conventional socket and a conventional torque spanner. But there's some of the nuts in here that we can't get a spanner into. So we have to use this special adapter here. It goes in through the lovely Gardner window and locates on the nut. We can then put on our torque spanner and we can torque it up. Now, uh, I can't actually show you uh, the torque and being on, done at the minute because this head has already been torqued. That's maybe a, a subject we'll come to. Uh, sometime in the future. Now, 
Um, if you're anyway engineering orientated, you're going to say, now that's a false reading because in effect, we have changed the length of the spanner. Okay, there's not a not insignificant increase in length therefore. That nut is going to be over torqued. But it's quite easy to show that if the torque spanner is operated at right angles to the extension, the torque is the same. So that'll be a completely accurate, proper torque setting we get there. I just thought there was a quite an interesting point that, I, that I'd like to get across. So thank you very much for being with us.